Hey everyone, this is David, Fairly Secret Music. Um, today I'm going to do a little different video. Uh, it's about how I organize my CDs. Um, I might try and see if I can switch the, the view on this, but I don't know if that will work very well. Anyway, so how do I organize CDs? Um, as you know, I have a lot of CDs. This is what you see here. And here is about half of it. Um, and then if I turn, there's the other half. So, how do I organize my CDs? At first, I did it alphabetically. But alphabetically, A through Z with four, around almost 4,000 CDs um, is impossible because you're constantly looking for stuff, you're constantly forgetting the name of somebody or some new artist that you picked up. Uh, in my case, it was either Cody Chestnut or Curtis Harding, who are both R&B singers. They would get lost in all of the CDs, so I decided to go by genre. Um, up here by necessity if i could put them in the genre sections i would put box sets in there uh some i do like i don't know if you can see that that's a magma box set um but i have all my box sets in one section and then uh i have these labels let's see if uh so yep, there we are I have a whole progressive section and you know the progressive section goes down to from here all the way down to about here and then all of this is jazz fusion and um, jazz and fusion that's that's what it is um, but I'll have things like uh, Bill Bruford, and even though he was in Yes, he was in um, King Crimson, I put him in the Jazz Fusion section, but um, at the same time, uh, Getty Lee, if you go to the Rush section, I put Getty Lee's solo album in with Rush, because I'm not going to remember him on his own, but when I'm looking for Rush stuff, I'll think, oh shit, I, got, I haven't listened to that Getty Lee album. And honestly, oh shit, I haven't listened to that Getty Lee album in a while. So, uh, Pink Floyd though, I don't put David Gilmore stuff in that because I just have him in the regular rock section. Um, Primus, I end up keeping Les Claypool and Primus stuff all together. Because if I'm looking for that type of stuff, even though I won't forget Les Claypool's name, I think he is pretty much Primus anyway, so I kind of keep him all together. Um, one thing that I don't do is, let me, uh, you got a bunch of Marillion right here and way down here, but I have all the fish stuff up here because he has enough to um, not have to be just shoved into Marillion. At one point I only had his first album and I did put him in with Marillion stuff. Um, a good example is the How We Live album by the uh, second singer of Marillion. This was um, I believe Colin Wurr and Steve Hogarth. Let me, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I put that with Marillion because I'm not going to remember how we live if I'm in the mood to listen to Steve Hogarth stuff. He has an album called H, and I would put that in with Marillion also. Um, Robert Fripp, however, even though he is pretty much the heart and soul of... King Crimson. I have all the Fripp stuff separated um, and all the King Crimson stuff. 
I do, however, put Ian Anderson with the Jethro Tull albums. Um, Genesis, a lot of people will wonder, where do you put Genesis? Because they started off very proggy. That is, whoops, sorry. That is like right there, the, the Peter Gabriel era box set. But I do have every Genesis album all in here because I figure if a band started in a genre that they should stay in that genre for the duration of their career, like Anathema. They're a doom band and then they were a rock band and now they're kind of like indie rock, but I just keep them in the metal section. So, um, sorry if this is kind of moving around and stuff. Um, I don't have a good tripod to keep the camera on or anything to clip it into place. Um, below the Fusion, I have, um, let's see if I can get a good shot. So this is all the stuff that I have recorded and worked on. And then I have R&B, Funk, and Soul for... Um, for like three shelves um i keep all the random or not random but the uh various artist r&b sorry it's i'm moving a bit and i can't remember which way is which uh i keep all the various artist r&b stuff at the beginning and because that's the really the only genre that i have like various artists of because um, they have great things like the big payback which is four CDs of underground funk and that that stuff is awesome there is also up top there is a what it is uh, funk collection that's also four discs and um, that thing is fantastic. If you are into funk at all, um, by all means, check those two out. Uh, so R&B, soul, and funk. And then on the bottom, because the shelves are, are taller, those are all my music DVDs. I would have them in the section with all my DVDs and my movies, but I think they deserve mm, kind of more respect than movies. Maybe that's just me, music DVDs. Um, I'm going to put this back up here and go away from the camera a bit. Sorry, I know Mickey said don't you want to be in, in the frame like this, but, well, actually, I could. I'm going to bring you with me. I'm going to bring you with me. This is all very DIY, so uh, deal with it. Um, up top here, I have all my hip-hop, and um, I mainly get into local hip-hop from my state, um, which is Atmosphere, um, you know, Brother Ali, Dessa, Doom Tree. Greaves is not from here, but he is on Rhyme Sayers. Uh, Christoph Crane, uh, Paper Tiger. But I also get all the Roots stuff, Beastie Boys. Um, who else is in here? And that's kind of it. That's kind of it. I'm, I'm very, very selective when it comes to hip-hop. Um... If you have not heard Christoph Crane, these two albums are fantastic. This is like the Cthulhu mythos of hip-hop. And this is the follow-up. It's like, oh goodness, he looks like Jesus in this one. And he looks like a Cthulhu monster in this one, practically. Or Cthulhu warrior. Uh, yeah, his is really good. So then we get to the um, all kinds of rock, it says. So in this section, I have um, 
I have punk rock because for lack of a better place, although I think Misfits are in my metal section, but I have the band All and The Descendants. Um, I have uh, classic rock, modern rock, jam bands, uh, folk rock, you name it. Um, with some of them, let's see, whoops, sorry about that. With some of them, I will take, say, uh, Tinted Windows. If you don't know who Tinted Windows are, they are a band with, uh, let's see, whoa, I just destroyed my CD. Um, I don't know, let's see. It's uh, James Ha, Adam Schleisinger, Taylor Hansen, and Bunny Carlos from Cheap Trick. Um, but where do I put them? Where do I put them? Let's see. Did I kill it? Nope, that's good. I put them in with Cheap Trick. Because if I'm going to listen to these guys, I probably am in the mood to listen to Cheap Trick also. Um, if, you ha if you like Cheap Trick and have not heard this band... Check them out. Bunny Carlos is fantastic. That's the drummer of Cheap Trick, if you don't know. Uh, if you don't know also, uh, you need to start listening to some classic rock. Um, they only made one album, and instead of putting it in the T section of classic rock, I would put it in the, in the Cheap Trick section, because, again, if I'm going to listen to Cheap Trick... I'm going to go, oh, hey, I'll grab Tinted Windows. Um, Almond Brothers, I have tons of Almond Brothers. By the way, um, let's see where, what the heck happened to it. Here we go. Um, Chris, also known as Dude uh, 1973 if you, I'm assuming, have this, the Deluxe, live at the Fillmore, you should also get the Fillmore tapes. No, Fillmore concerts. Um, this is a remix by uh, Tom Dowd produced it, and it was mixed again from the same tapes. So on this version, you get um, a little louder drums. They're more present in the mix. And um, the guitars might be a smidge quieter, but honestly, I kind of think this is, mm, I don't know. I love them both. The funny thing with the Allman Brothers is my nephew gave me a bunch of cassettes and CDs and vinyl to sell for him. And in that bunch of cassettes and CDs and, and vinyl were two cassettes. He had Eat a Peach and Live at Fillmore on cassette. I put this in because I had a cassette player in my car at the time. I forgot CDs for my drive to work. I had a half an hour basically to kill and I thought, you know what? Okay, I'll listen to Allman Brothers. I put this on and Side One comes on and I'm listening to their guitar solos, and I'm thinking, God, these guys suck. I just, they're the worst guitar soloists ever. And I take it out, and I throw it in the back seat, and I'm just like, no, Allman Brothers aren't for me. So, the next week, forget CDs again. This time, I start it on side two. And this time, In the Memory of Elizabeth Reed starts playing. And that time, I'm like, holy shit, these guys are amazing guitarists. Totally, just totally complete 180 in my love or hate for um, the Allman Brothers. And that is why I own two versions of this. Um, because I do think that the drums are a little bit too buried on this album. Whereas on the Fillmore concerts, you get a little bit more oomph on those. Um, let's see. Oh, 
goodness. So, they released these two Bauhaus CDs in these deluxe packages. It comes with the box, two discs, and this really nice booklet, right? Really amazing booklet. But the problem is, that's where they stop. They did In a Flat Field, which is this one, and they did Mask. And I have been waiting for the follow-ups to these. I only have their newest album, the Reunion album, and um, Press Eject and Hand Me the Tape, I think it's called. Press Eject and Give Me the Tape. I don't have any of the other studio albums because I've been waiting for those to come out in the deluxe editions, and I just don't think they're going to come out. Um, let's see. What else do I want to talk to you about? Uh, so we got classic rock, we got modern rock, we got indie rock, whatever other kind of rock goes on there. And if you look really closely right here, boop, boop, or right here, this says re re return movies in slut because the video store I used to go to all the time had a sign that said return movies in slot and I kept on telling them I was going to come and change the O to a U and they just made me a sign and said here you go now you don't have to change our sign. <laughs> so let's uh, let's see what we have here. Um, classic Rock goes down to about here and or class all the rock stuff goes down to about there um i'm gonna have to set up another level for you guys to be able to see stuff so let me hope this uh chair makes it over here all right so i told you this was going to be a different different animal altogether i have a couch right here that i normally don't have to move uh normally this is out of the way but my brother bought a new drum set i have to store it here and set it up and whatever to get it ready so we can record with it and uh it's taken up a little bit more space than i was thinking it was going to um so we get classic rock down to about here and this section right here, uh, this is all black metal before this cassette, basically. Let me uh, bring it a little fo more forward. So all of this is my black metal section. Uh, I decided, like, when I'm in the mood for something, I really just want to be able to grab it easily and not have to worry about looking through a bunch of things, just like the R&B section, basically. Um, I don't like this because I am staring right here, and that's just weird for me. Um, and then this section is all the post-metal or post-rock type bands. So you will have, like, uh, Callisto, um, The Ancestors, who kind of are more proggy than metal, but they they kind of straddle the line. Let me uh, let me bring this over here, so I don't have to hold on to it. They straddle the line of what is metal and what is kind of post metal or prog. Um, so you're gonna get a lot of Minsk bands, basically that seem like they were inspired by neurosis. So I have all those together. And then it goes metal for three more rows. Um, I also have these flashlights so I can, you know, sometimes I don't have enough light so I, I'm able to uh, check out what's down here. Just a little flashlight. Um, just makes looking for stuff easier and then 
Now it's all going to be handheld. So we go over here and let's see. We also have metal, metal, metal. So what do I consider in the metal section? Um, in the metal section, I consider, um, let's see, let me sit back down. Um, I consider like death, fate's warning, dream theater, um, paradise lost, all the things that don't fit into like, well, I could have a death metal section. I could especially have a technical death metal section. Um, I could have a thrash section, but that kind of all is easy to figure out where it is in my collection. Um, I don't really have that much of a problem with that. I remember most of those bands, and it's, it's a lot in the newer stuff, especially like R&B singers that I, I can't remember their names for the first month or so, but I'll go, oh, I need that guy. Um, so we, I have, you know, it, it basically is Black Sabbath, Anthrax, Death, Deicide, uh, Fate's Warning, Iron Maiden, Gathering, um, uh, Voivod, Racer X, uh, Slayer, uh, Motorhead, etc. Um, the only time metal for me, besides these two other genres that I've pulled out, get really um, figured out is right around this shelf. Uh, I got one. Well, I have like a maybe a third of it. Two, three four, almost five of just hair metal. And that means that it's like Kiss, Twisted Sister, Rat, um, Motley Crue, Kicks. You guys know, it's actually labeled hair metal and cock rock. And then my last um, of the quote unquote rock kind of genres, I have um, almost or a little over one row of what I consider consider to be kind of 90s hard rock and grunge. Um, so I have Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, uh, even King's X. I have King's X in that because I think King's X really fit the grunge era. Um, they were light years better than all of them, in my opinion but they are just not from the right state. Texas versus Seattle. Um, but but you got... What else do I have in there that is odd? Oh, Last Crack. Um, some bands like um, Audio Slave are in there. Um, well, that's pretty obvious why Audio Slave is in there, because of Chris Cornell. I meant to say... Um, Alter Bridge. I have Alter Bridge in there. So it's kind of more like that new heavy hard rock that you hear on all those kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, like lame current heavy rock stations. Um, and then last but not least, um, I don't know if you can see it. It's all right here. This is a whole section of classical and just a little bit of information on classical. Um, of course, there is always Yo-Yo Ma because I also play cello. I'm not the greatest cello player, but um, I really appreciate his playing, especially the box suites. Um, and then there is a artist or a group of guys called the um the art dd quartet and they did these things um on a, on a special label that if you wanted to hear some crazy um better than chronos quartet 
stuff, pushing envelopes like crazy classical music. Our DD Quartet is your way to go. And last but not least, I will end with You Cannot Beat a Charlie Brown Christmas. Hope you like this. Hope it uh, gives you some ideas. Um, you'll probably tell me I'm crazy for organizing like this, but it's my collection, so I don't give a shit. <laughs>